So cool thing happened. We got a new 3D printer. I know some of you guys were in the live chat. I really appreciate it. You took everything I had. You tore it all apart. But baby, don't you touch my scarred guitar. What's up guys? My name's Sean. And if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. Now I had no intentions at all on doing a video on this printer because of course I'm a guitar channel and we do guitar stuff here. But this thing is so awesome, I just wanted to show it to you and a couple of things I encountered along the way that will probably help you if you decide to get one. The first thing that I loved about this printer was the simple fact that it came with about seven screws to put it together. Man, you can't beat that. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to put it together by yourself in case you don't have anyone around. First thing you have to do is you gotta remove the ties off of it. It's got some twist ties on it. I don't have that on the camera because it's just boring content. You take those twist ties off, but this isn't boring content. If you're by yourself and you're putting this together, what I recommend is you get your long screws, okay? You pull this over to the edge of a table. Go ahead and set this up there where you think it's gonna go, okay? I know that hole down here is right in between those screws, so I'm just kind of lining it up by eye a little. And I'm just going to set this guy up in here. And then I should be able to wiggle this a little. And get it in there just fine. We'll go ahead and do both sides over here. Now I'll go ahead and tighten this up, but I won't do it all the way. Just get them in there good where I can flip around to the other side. You know you're doing something right when this starts moving around on its own, tightening up. <laughs> Flip them on around. Careful not to snag any of the wires or break anything. Same thing. Pull it off the edge of the table. And this way you don't have to flip the machine upside down and risk getting it all kinked up and crooked. And you know what I'm saying? Less chances you can screw something up doing it like this too. Now I can go ahead and tighten it up because everything's lined up. I'll go ahead and tighten this side, I'll flip around and tighten the other side good. We don't want to tighten it too much because we don't want to strip the aluminum either. This thing's not going to do a whole bunch of jerky movement or have a ton of vibration. So you're not going to have to worry about them screws coming loose too much. What I found is you always need to do a little maintenance on everything. I don't care what it is. You can go back and tighten some screws up. All right, now we've got three screws here to mount the LCD screen. But I'm gonna tell you what you need to do before that, I'm gonna stop right here again and say, check under this thing here. Make sure you got that twist tie out from underneath there. Okay, you got a few twist ties you gotta remove. I just wanna remind you. Now I'm gonna try to make it easy for you to put this on there, because these are such small screws. What I like to do is I'll put it on my Allen wrench first, hold it with my finger like that, put that guy where it goes, pop it in the hole. I have less chances of dropping the thing, dropping the screw, you know what I mean? This works good like that to me. Never have a problem, I'll do it like that. See? Just hold that on the end of the Allen wrench. Let the Allen wrench hold it for you. And then the big one goes in the top. We can just drop him in. Let gravity do its job there. That's tightened up. All right, let's plug everything in. This goes to the LCD screen. Make sure it's plugged in well. They didn't give us a lot of slack here, did they? And not having a lot of slack is good because we don't want these wires hanging off and getting in the way of stuff. If you got big fingers like me, that can be a pain. And on this one, little slots in. only told you that in case you can't see real good <laughs> like me I'm trying to feel your way around <laughs> I 
Now we have to plug in the extruder stepper motor and the feeder stepper motor. And that's this big braided cable right here. It goes just like that. Stick it right in there. Push your clips in. Now this, make sure you don't put this over this bar. Because when this goes down, guess what's going to happen? It's going to hit it. It needs to go underneath like this. You see how it goes? Easy as pie. Now this guy's wired and ready for sound. Now I'm going to show you one thing that I did. I have the Mega X and it has this same sensor right here. And what this sensor is, is it tells the machine that there's filament going to it. Okay. This wears out really quickly, I discovered. And I always watch my machine. I don't leave it sitting around with a little bit of filament hoping it's going to stop. You know what I mean? I just think this sensor right here is really dumb, but it doesn't work without it. If there's no filament in there, this machine won't work. So here's what I do. Now you get this nifty difty Allen wrench set with it. And this is the one we need. We're just going to remove the sensor. By taking out this one screw. See that? And now what am I going to do with it? I'm just going to flip it over. I'm going to get it out of the way of the filament. See that? I just flip it over. Tighten them on up. Tighten it up. And then the most important part, I put a tiny piece of filament in it. That way it always thinks it has filament in it. And I never have to worry about this wearing out. As far as I know, it's good to go. Got all the twist ties off. Everything's plugged in. I got the power cord plugged in now. So let's power him up. Wow, that came on fast. <laughs> you see how fast that was? That was quick, huh? Now the controls look pretty simple for this thing. I've never used it either. But, uh... I do want to do the auto leveling. It might be under tools. No. Under prepare. Yep. There's leveling. Let's click that. Auto leveling. There it is. Use a tool to touch printer nozzle to calibrate leveling sensor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little tool right here. And we're going to touch that tip right there. That tells it. See it? Calibration success. Leveling is starting. Okay. Now it's going to home. Now the way the auto leveling works on this, it's not that it's going to adjust the bed and it's going to get it all level and all that. That's not what happens here. What really happens is, is the Z-axis adjusts to the height of the bed during the print itself in real time, which is pretty impressive. Okay, it's going to start the probe now. You can see it raising itself up. It's going to touch the bed in 16 different points, and that's where it's going to judge the levelness of the bed from. Okay, it's done auto leveling. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it on its final resting place. We're going to put some filament in it. We're going to run a print. Now the first thing we need to do before we can print is we need to put our filament in. Now a lot of guys are going to tell you to come over here to the LED screen. But that's not what I'm going to do. There's a relief latch right here if you see. That's what I'm going to call it. If I push this, that takes the relief off of the filament that's pushing it into these little gears here that make it go through this tube. Now I could feed it through with the LCD screen, but instead of doing that and taking all day, I'm just going to stick it in there, like so. I'm going to open up the relief, and I'm going to push it into the tube, all the way till it gets to the extruder. My wife makes these cool little horses, and she uses this to print the wings that she makes the Pegasus with. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use one of the files that I've already made from my Mega X. And we're just going to load it into this and see what happens. Now I've got my chip and my file on it. I'm just going to stick it straight into the printer here in the card slot. Give it a click. It's all good. Then we come over here to the LCD screen. We touch print. We select our file. And we hit print. Now it's got to heat the bed up first. And then it's going to heat up the extruder. And then it should start printing. We'll come back and check it in a minute.
Now another thing I really love about this printer is how smooth it prints. And it's super quiet. And I just really dig the little light on there. But those are coming out great. We'll check them out when they're done. Okay, our print's all done and man, it looks great. I think the number one feature on this printer is this magnetic bed. Watch how easy it is to remove the material now that it's cooled down. Look at that. <laughs> and if you want to take it off while it's hot to cool it faster, you just pull this guy up. See that? You just pop that up, pull whatever you did off of it, you're done. Yeah, I have to admit that this is a really quality print. Um, There's nothing else you can say. Now, I know this printer is kind of expensive, but I'm going to tell you something right now. You're going to save yourself a headache by go ahead and dropping that extra couple hundred bucks. You go buy you a $200 printer, you're going to have the same headaches I did for years. Trust me, if it takes you a couple of extra months to save up the extra to get this guy, you'll be happy in the end. You won't have $200 wasted. Now, I got a friend of mine that's coming over, and we're building that guitar kit. He has zero experience, can't even play the guitar. That's going to be a great video. And I really appreciate you watching. But until next time, don't you touch my scar guitar. Don't you touch my scar.